unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Recently, I was uh, sharing in one of the sermons and it kept coming back to me that I had committed to share about revelation, about the spirit, the power of revelation, the power of understanding divine mysteries. You know, people need to understand the power of divine mysteries because people take, you know, the mysteries of the spirit as uh, something that is lightly esteemed either because we confuse the simplicity in Christ with the simplicity of Christ. Um, God has called us, you and I, to connect to the world of divine mysteries, all right? And to enjoy the glory and the power of the mysterious world, right? The world of mysteries, okay? Now, with this, I also define, you know, that there are mysteries in the dark world, okay? And there are mysteries in the kingdom of heaven. So when we're talking about mysteries, we're talking about mysteries touching the kingdom of heaven, all right? We're talking about mysteries that touch the kingdom of heaven, the things that touch the light of God, okay? So when we emphasize this as the faith, as Christians, as believers, and we say that we need to know how to connect to the divine mysteries of God, it is not something that God has called for a few individuals in the body of Christ to attain or work with or work for or walk into. I believe that this is a definitive calling for the whole body of Christ. And tonight I want to take time to express you know, the heart of God touching divine mysteries, the power that comes with that and the glory that comes with the same. We're living in a world that is so full of the realm of reason and thought, right? So the realm of thought and reason is so commanding because it is so philosophically right. It is so psychologically right. It is so scientifically right. Biology can connect to it because it's really theoretical. It's hypothesis that can be tested and proved or disproved, and consequently, solutions are given to the world of men, the physical realm. And there are many people in the world, the biggest percentage of the population in the world is so ignorant about God, about the world of mysteries, touching the kingdom of God right? Touching the kingdom of God. Now, there is a law that touches mysteries, all right? And it has its precepts, it has its patterns, it has its principles. But by and large, some people think that you can have a very standard and steady relationship with God without understanding how he operates touching mysteries, touching divine mysteries, all right? Every time we're teaching, more so for the apostolic, we are trying to demystify the mysterious. All right? We're trying to demystify the mysterious. And we have a group of educated people, and some not really educated by God or in the ways of God, but educated in the ways of this world, and they have or are presenting us a kind of Christianity that is so simple in approach that it does not work for the complicated stuff, okay? It is so simple, so simple, but it does not work for the most complicated stuff. It's applicable when you're, you know, you want to eat a meal, but it's not applicable when you're dealing with a stage four cancer, okay? It's applicable 
when you want to buy a pair of shoes, hallelujah, but it's not applicable when you are dealing with a dead body in a house, okay? And because of that, that laxity in the body of Christ, we have many Christians that are so dull of hearing, right? Their ears have been waxed, and they have amassed around themselves, the Bible says, teachers who speak the stuff they want to hear. Some people think that the things they want to hear are necessarily the stuff that is morally denigrating, but that is not true, all right? That is not true. Some of the things that are of dull ears to hear, waxed and is amassing teachers around them to speak stuff they want to hear. It's not necessarily evil, okay? But it is something that appeals to the realm of reason and thought, okay? And the more you deal with God, mostly in the realm of reason and thought, you start to miss out some of the most fundamental truths of the reality of this person. Because God does not dwell in the most visible things for interpretation, okay? He, yes, dwells in the most visible things for observation, okay? For people who would deal in the normal standard of proof that God exists, look at the trees, look at the flowers, look at the mountains, look at the valleys, you know, that they all, you know, express the glory of God, all right? Shekinah, the manifestation of God's glory, all right? Kabod, you know, but... We want to go past that. We want to go past, oh, you know, the whole world can see these trees and say, oh, God exists. But is that enough for them to believe God? Board, that there's a gloriousness in the mountains we see. There's a gloriousness in the valleys that we see, in the deserts and then beauty, in the green and the creatures of this world. Yes, some can connect to God that way. But the biggest percentage of men and people in this world have thoughts and reasons around that. Some express it through evolution. All right? And many scientific things that can be used to explain the existence of certain things and phenomena. All right? But I want to talk about a God that is deeper or can reveal himself more deeply and intricately to us than what we are able to prove from the things that exist in the physical realm. All right? And that is where we connect to the power of divine mysteries to understand why God has let things, you know, align themselves according to the unveiling of his mysteries. Remember, I tell people that always the spirit realm is a veiled realm. It's a very veiled realm. Okay? And because it's a very veiled realm, there is always a tendency by God, intended by God, to help us unveil the things that are veiled. Okay? And when these things are veiled for us and we receive the understanding of these things, then we can relate with revelation. Revelation is not revelation if we do not understand the things that are unveiled. And without revelation, we cannot connect to divine purpose of why things are revealed to us. And without that divine purpose, then we cannot have the manifestation of the things that are revealed in the spirit realm. Okay, And to shy away from that, one time I was counseling a young fellow who came to me and told me my pastor said that he doesn't want to hear anything called mysteries. He doesn't want anyone to talk about mysteries. I didn't know how to answer the young man because already, even just being a human being is a mystery. Okay, And then we also have a sort of line of believers who have expressed the mind that uh, because everything has been uh, revealed, Okay? But they cannot connect people to what they claim has been revealed. All right? And they are true in one sense that all has been revealed, and I'll express that later in my teaching. But then how are people going to connect to that and walk in the reality of the stuff that is revealed? Because not all believers are open in the spirit realm for the reality of these mysteries to be expressed through them by the power of revelation. Okay. So I want to take you through certain things in Scripture and help your mind connect to these things and know why we need to be connected, to be aligned to the power and glory of divine mysteries. Now, in Proverbs chapter 25, verses 2, firstly, let's define the nature of God. Let's first define an attribute, okay, the glory of God. Who is God? How does he relate with people? Because you cannot relate with a God who you don't know. You must have an exercise of understanding his person, his nature. Okay. Now, the Bible says in Proverbs 25 verses 2, the Bible says, It is the glory of God. It is the glory 
of God. In fact, the root there, kabod, also borrows the word, it is the character of God. It is in the abundance of God. It is in the likeness of God. It's in the way of God. The Bible says, to conceal a thing. That's just who God is. It's his way. It's just how he works. He conceals stuff. All right? And the Bible says, but the honor or the glory of kings is to search out a matter. In fact, if you study the Hebrew, the word glory there and honor one and the same. Okay, kabod. It's also the character of a king. So when we talk about the kingly anointing, all right, it's in the character of the kingly anointing to search out a matter. All right. When we're talking about this seeking, we're not just men who are exploring in the things of the spirit. No, but we are just men who are available in the spirit for him to reveal the things he must reveal for us. But that hunger, okay, that prompting of the spirit to avail ourselves is what we call the searching out of a matter. All right. The spirit realm, when we're talking about the kingdom of heaven, is not just the place where somebody walks into in the things of the spirit and starts looking around and observing things. And then he says, you know, I think my interest is this. No, the liberties of the spirit do not go beyond our place of understanding. You are as free as you carry understanding. You are as free as you have knowledge and revelation. The Bible says the truth you know makes you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Okay? Not set you. The version is shall make you free. The KJV uses the word make, not set. Make you free. All right? So that means the more acquaintance you are to the realities of truth, the more liberties are exposed to you, not as those that were not there for you to receive as you expose yourself to truth, but as those that were already available for you, but you could not carry access to them because you were not exposed to the truth, to the understanding. God does not give you more than you're able to fathom. Okay? And neither can you take men where you've not been in the spirit. You can only lead men where you have been in the spirit, not where you assume to be in the spirit. And that's what creates the trouble for men which borrow waters, all right? The Bible says stolen waters are sweet, okay? Sometimes to borrow the lines of a man, to borrow the revelation of a man, which is okay, if you carry the understanding of where the man speaks from. Right? But it's one thing for you to speak, oh, you know, you caught, you probably read a wonderful book or you watch a wonderful video of a man of God and then you repeat that same line. But without the experience, without the reality uh, of experience, touching where the man is speaking from. All right? Jesus walked with his disciples and many things that Christ did and his disciples did not understand. Some of the things that he did were understood later, way later. Okay, in John, when he goes into the temple and then he, you know, breaks everything where he had found money changers and transactors. And then he says, you know, this is the house of the Lord. You're not supposed to waste it. And the scriptures tell us that as he did that, the people that were watching, the people that were observing him, of course, in the temple were astonished. Why is this guy doing whatever he's doing? Okay? Why is he destroying our stuff? He found us doing our own business. What is this? Of course, I can imagine what the people in the temple were thinking. You see this strange young fellow. He studies. He's just destroying everything left, right, and center. Okay? The Bible says in John chapter 2, verses 15, he says, And when he had made a scourge of the small cords, he drove them all out in the temple, the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables, and said unto them that sold the doves, take these things and make not my father's house an house of merchandise. And the Bible says, and his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. His disciples remembered, they remembered, they remembered something. Okay, something brought them to remembrance. Probably this is what zeal is, okay? So there are many things where the disciples of Christ used to walk with him and have underlying messages, words about him, things about him, but they were not yet connected for them. 
They were not yet connected for them. All right? And so that experience at the temple that helps the disciples of Jesus Christ to connect that, oh, this is zeal doing this. This is zeal doing this. And many such things happened in the life of the Christ, like they are in our faith present day. That there are many things you have read. There are many things you have heard your pastors teach. But for them to be revealed to you to make sense, it takes the teaching, the instruction, and the grace of the Holy Spirit. All right? Therein is power to finally get the gist of the mystery. When you say this, what did he mean? When he expressed that, what did he mean? All right? And so it's in the nature of God to conceal. If you're to study God, he is just the God that conceals stuff. All right? He's just the God who conceals stuff. And so to relate with him, you have to come to terms with that and be available to access what is concealed in God. To access what is concealed in God. In Deuteronomy 29, 29, it's a common scripture. The Bible says that the secret things belong unto the Lord. Okay? The secret things belong unto the Lord. But the Bible says, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. What is he telling us? He's saying that our God is a God of secret things. Our God is in the nature and character of hiding stuff. All right? And it's our responsibility to connect ourselves to the things that are hidden through the power of revelation. When we can access the things that are hidden through the power of revelation, it means that we share in the stuff that is hidden. We share in the stuff that is hidden. Of course, you might go in the way of asking, why does God hide stuff? Okay, yeah, it's his nature, but why does he hide it? Why does he hide things from us? Let's open in uh, Daniel chapter 2. In Daniel, we're given a story of how the king, Nebuchadnezzar, gathers the wise men of the land. All right? When he gathers the wise men of the land, he calls the Chaldeans, the sorcerers, the magicians, and all the wise men of that time. Okay? And he calls them and he says, you know, I had a dream that troubled me. And the man that interprets that dream, to him will I reward, okay? I need that. But he tells them, but if I don't carry an interpretation, I'm going to kill you all. Because I think the king was so troubled that he was surrounding himself around people which claimed to know God, which claimed to connect to gods. Uh, but he could not get an answer, right? And true to form, the magician sought out the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, the fortune tellers, all of them started to seek the magicians. They started to connect to their gods. But they could not get into the space of where the king saw these things. Of course, God was instructing the king. But they could not connect to the realm where the Babylonian king was getting instructed. Okay, There are things, it doesn't matter how deep a magician is, how deep... A fortune teller is how deep a psychic is. It doesn't matter whether they're using the third eye or clairvoyancy. It doesn't matter just how much they can be exposed in the dark world. Now I'm talking about the dark world. There is stuff that they can never access. It's just not for them. Even if they try, they can't access it. They can't access divine purpose. They can't. Because that's in the realm the things of the kingdom, and it is concealed by God, all right? Now, the Bible tells us that the king starts to look for people who, you know, could interpret the dream. They were not able, okay? And then Daniel comes, the man of the spirit. He summons his friends, and they seek the Lord. And the Bible says, and the Lord appeared to Daniel and revealed to him the whole mystery of the dream, okay? The next day, Daniel approaches the king, and then shares with him everything that God had revealed to him. And from the 46th verse, this is the king's reaction. Okay, The Bible says, The king Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face 
and paid homage to Daniel as a great prophet of the highest God and ordered that an offering and incense should be offered upon to him in honor of his God. Now I'm reading the Amplified. Now the king answered Daniel. He says, Over truth, your God is the God, capital G, of gods, small gods, G, and the Lord of kings, and a revealer of secret mysteries, seeing that you could reveal this secret mystery. All right? Seeing that you could reveal this secret mystery, now I can confirm that your God is the God, capital G, of all God, small g. All right? And then in the verse 48, the Bible says, The king made Daniel great. He made him great and gave him many gifts. And the Bible says, and made him to rule over the whole province of Babylon, to be chief governor over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel requested of the king that he appoint Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel remained in the gate of the king at the king's court. I just want to show you the power, the glory of revealing divine mysteries. Things only God can do and reveal. Daniel was a normal man, a normal prophet, a normal man of God, okay? And God creates opportunity, like in every dispensation of time, he will always create opportunities for revealing things or aligning things to people that are notable, positioned, and accorded in history according to divine purpose and time, and some people or individuals will be advantaged in different areas of life. They'll be elevated in different spheres of graces and they'll have influences in various dimensions of the spirit. All right. When it comes to Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible says that he had held yoke over all the nations of the world. He had a sphere of influence that hit the whole world. Nebuchadnezzar was not a normal man. He was very, very, very influential in the spirit realm. Okay. And remember, he was the leader of Babylon. Okay, so all the wise men, the Chaldeans and all these guys are summoned and they can't give an answer to the king. And then the man of God, Daniel, goes to seek God when the wise men are going to be killed. And God tells him not only the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, but also the interpretation of that dream. When Daniel takes it before the king, the Bible says the king bows his face towards this man of God. And he tells him of a truth infallible. There is no God bigger than your God. And because he has revealed this, because you've been able to reveal a secret, to reveal a mystery, the demystification of a mystery elevates you to greatness. It exposes you to realms of elevation by man, by those around you, by the things that you come in contact with, that you do not need to seek influence. No, it makes you influential. Daniel was a normal man, okay? But because he had access to something in the spirit that no magician, no fortune teller, no soothsayer had, before we knew that, he was given governor over the realm of Babylon. And before we know that, he was put in a special place in the gates of the king. The Bible says the king made Daniel great and gave him great gifts and gave him authority to rule over things and people. Why? Because he had access to something no man in that dimension had access to. There was a dimension that was hidden from any eye that yields from darkness that only a man of light could access. And that's what made Daniel a different man. But you see, if I even need to go a bit deeper into the life of Daniel, for me, he has been a standard for men who know how to seek God and pray. Daniel was a man who knew how to seek his God. He was a man who knew how to go into the deepest places of God, the secret places of God. He knew how to connect to God a certain way. And out of that, he comes out with something that changes the history, okay, of the Jew, like we know them under Babylonian rule, because he was exalted in a place. That's why later in chapter 3, Daniel, when then, uh, you know, the evil one plots something to destroy the servants of God, if you remember, whoever doesn't bow, you know, to this idol, let them be killed. If you recall Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're thrown in the fire, but Daniel is not in the fire. Why? Because he had been elevated in a place of the gates of the king where no man, nobody was even allowed to question whether Daniel bowed to that idol or he 
hardened, okay? That is what access to divine mystery can do. That is the power and glory of divine mystery. Some of you struggle to access, to connect to great things, okay? You struggle to connect uh, to places of influence, of power, okay, and leadership. But you don't see that this is what makes a man exceptional. And yes, I am speaking in light with the word and the gospel, all right? But this is as true in the business world. This is as true in the political realm. This is as true in the institutions of education. This is as true as your career life. This is as true as any other aspect of life. If you do not have that thing, if you cannot connect to spaces men cannot easily connect to, if you cannot unveil the stuff that is hidden in the spirit realm in the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be hard for you to influence the world of men. As ministers, our work is to stay connected to that realm because every time we stay connected to that realm, he says, kings shall come to your rising, Gentiles shall come to your light, strangers will serve you. Look at that diligence. Eh? He says, for when a man is diligent in his work, the Bible says, for that man shall stand before kings and not before mean men. The greatest of this world will bow to you, seek to serve you, seek to connect to you, seek to do anything for you, why? Because you connect to a realm their money cannot connect to, their leadership cannot connect to, their influence cannot connect to, their power and abilities, their intellect and potential cannot connect to. That is what makes you different. That is what makes you different. Now, when we get in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'll read from the Amplified Version, we'll begin from verse 6, okay? The Bible says, Yet, when we are among the full grown, the spiritually mature Christians who are ripe in understanding, okay, he says, we do impart a higher wisdom, the knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden, okay, watch the word hidden there, but it is indeed not a wisdom, the Bible says, of the present age or of the world, nor of the leaders and rulers of this age, the Bible says, who are being brought to nothing and are doomed to pass away. So this thing, this thing we're dealing with, this wisdom we're exuding, these mysteries we're giving, the revelations that are coming out of our spirits. He says when we're speaking to them that are mature, okay, we speak a higher wisdom. But when we're talking about this wisdom, it is not the wisdom of this world. It's not the wisdom of the rulers of this world. It's not the wisdom of this age, the present eon in the world of men. No, this one is a higher place. It's accorded into a higher law. It's higher than the usual, okay? This is the foundation of our ministry and our message, the thing that justifies us and qualifies us before men. In verse 7, the Bible says, but rather what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God once hidden from human understanding and now revealed to us by God, that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glorification to lift us into the glory of his presence. The stuff that God hides is for our sake. It's for us that he hides these things. And he hides these things to lift us up into the glory of his presence. You cannot speak transcending multi-dimensionals of the spirit when you have not connected to this wisdom, when you have not connected to this grace, when you have not connected to this glory. He says, this is the thing that lifts us up into that presence that influences the world, that touches and changes nations, that heals the sick and raises the dead and cleanses the lepers. This is the thing right now that makes you the successful businessman, that makes you influential in that job, that makes you fast in your career, that thing that sets you as the most influential person in your time, that thing that makes you the best engineer, the best doctor, the best pilot, the best politician, the best there is that must be. It's that thing that connects you. And he says, this is the wisdom in which we speak. And he goes in verses 8. He says, none of the rulers of this age or world perceived and recognized and understood this. For if they had, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. But on the contrary, as the scripture says, what eye has not seen. Okay, now I want to show you how we connect into this. What eye has not seen. 
and ear has not heard and has not entered into the heart of man. The Bible says, all that God has prepared and made ready and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him and gratefully recognizing the benefits he bestowed on us. Yet to us, the Bible says, God has unveiled and revealed them by and through his spirit for the Holy Spirit, such as diligently exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God, the divine counsels and things hidden beyond human scrutiny. Look at what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. He says that these things eye has not seen, physical or spiritual, ear has not heard, and has not entered. Those things which God has prepared and made ready, these things that are available. But the Bible says, but he has revealed them to us through the Spirit. In other words, the Christian is a natural demystifier of the mysterious. The Christian is a natural demystifier of divine mysteries. You are supposed to be or live in a life that simply releases these things. To live in a constant life of being not only available to reveal the things of God, but also to overflow in the things that are supposed to be mysterious when it comes to the divinity of God. God has called you to be this person that opens your mouth and things start coming out of you and amaze the world and change the world and interpret dreams, align destinies, and plot men in the course they must go. These are the things that are supposed to change kingdoms. These are the things that are supposed to change empires. These are the things that are supposed to change nations. These are the things that are supposed to change companies, you know, multinational conglomerate. These are the things that are supposed to change institutions. These are the things that are supposed to change systems. These are the things that are supposed to shake the status quo. These are the things that are supposed to take men out of mediocrity to elevate them into higher spaces of life. These are the things things that are supposed to develop men. These are the things that were called to empower men. And all of these things are pegged, okay, in God. When it comes to you, the new creation, he has made them available through his spirit because you have the spirit that such as the bottomless things of God. You are a possessor. The Bible says you were sealed with the Holy Spirit to the day of redemption. This is available. I wish we emphasize just how much is available for the believer. You'll see that it will be easy for them to connect to the faith of demonstrating and exercising and living out, manifesting these things easily. I can never emphasize that if you were following me from the beginning of this service to now, I am showing you the things that release greatness the things that star your God-given potential to come to manifestation that the world will see that there's something that makes you unique. This is regardless of your color, it's regardless of your ethnicity, your race, the nation you come from, whether you're educated or not, how many theology degrees you have, how many PhDs you have. This thing can only be connected in God. And that's why I tell people we can never emphasize the power of mystery. Because every time you have access to mystery, you position yourself to release the greatness that is already available for you in Christ. There are many people who probably are starting to understand the seed of greatness, but many of them cannot connect to how to get that thing out of them for the world to see that God-given potential in your spirit to change this world. Each one of us has been given things in you. God has planted stuff in you. The Bible says that this greatness, it surpasses, it's beyond, it's immeasurable. Okay? It's immeasurable. It's not limited to anything. Paul in Ephesians calls it the surpassing greatness of power that worketh in us who believe. That same power which he wrote when he raised Christ from the dead, that thing is inside this average person, this normal believer that is listening to me today. Okay? All you need is an awakening in the spirit for you to connect to this thing. 
All you need are experiences in the spirit for you to understand that that is not just a destination. That is where you belong already. And all you need is to start understanding in your spirit so you can connect to what is already available for you through the Holy Spirit. What a wonder. What a wonder. Now, this goes beyond reasoning. You can't reason this out. This goes beyond thoughts. It's beyond human thought. It's beyond logic. It's beyond mathematics. It's beyond algebra. It's beyond science and biology. It is the wisdom of God. It's the wisdom of God. No wonder Proverbs tells you what wisdom will do for you. He says that the bringing of wisdom cannot be compared to any precious thing, not gold, nor silver, nothing. Because when you have that, when you can connect to that, he says that wisdom and knowledge is the stability of your times and the strength of your salvation. It is the only thing that God has guaranteed to make you stable in your dispensation. If you don't have that, you will never be relevant. You will have a struggling ministry if you're a pastor. You'll have a struggling business if you're a businessman. You'll have a struggling career if you're an engineer or a doctor or a pilot. Whatever you'll be, you will struggle through life. Why? Because you have not understood how to connect to what is already available for you in Christ. And when this thing connects to you, every time you start to show men, regardless of which field you are called, you'll show them stuff that is new. You'll speak things in the ears of men that is new. You'll plant seeds in the hearts of men that is new. Things out of you will be new. Every day you'll have something new on you. People will gather to connect to what is new. If people want to know what's new, what's latest, what's fresh, they will look for you. Why? Because you're connected to that source. But you see, you cannot walk in it without understanding it. And that's what I've labored to do in this period, to help you understand what is available for you as a believer. Never shun anything that connects you to divine mystery. And it takes a certain grace of God to separate vocabulary from revelation. Because some people think that the deeper a man's vocabulary is, the deeper the revelation of that man. No. The changing of sentences and connecting of words is not the spirit of revelation. This is deeper. Paul was not a good speaker. But the Bible says, but his writings were bold. That your confidence or his confidence would not dwell in his abilities as an orator, but in the power of God. In the power of God. Probably when Paul was speaking, he could even bore people. But hey, this is the man that God uses to draw the foundation of the New Testament, which you and I are reading every day. Why? Because he accessed something. He connected to something that many people were not able to connect to. That is the gospel. That is the message. And wherever God has called you, in whichever field the Lord has called you, connect to the power of mystery. Connect to the dimensions that reveal divine mystery you'll be amazed at how everything around you will start to connect. God will create atmospheres that bring out that greatness in you. Great things will come around you. Great people will come around you. Great opportunities will come around you. Why? Because you are illuminated in that reality. You are awakened in that knowledge. And I pray by God in the name of Jesus Christ. That as his word has gone out tonight, more than the words that I'm able to express, I pray that in the simplest way, this understanding will be imprinted in the heart of a believer today. And as that happens, greatness will be evident. Things will start coming your way more than you can count in the mighty name of Jesus. Men will come to favor you. Kings will come to your rising, Gentiles to your light. Strangers will serve you. Everything that was out of order is coming now to order in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that was regressing and slowing now is going to be quickened in the name of Jesus. Everything that was of a burden is going to become light in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you're connecting to the glory and power of divine mystery. And from today, the spirit of revelation engulfs you. It surrounds you. It fills and saturates you to connect to the understanding of the things that are already revealed in Christ. For the Bible says that the Spirit of God is the revealer of things that are freely given to us by Christ or in Christ. 
So I thank you, Lord, because your word is working effectually in our lives for that lover of the word and the hungry soul that needs to be elevated. Tonight, an answer has come out, and that answer is going to have consequence. It will have effect to the glory of your name, expansion of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. If you're sick in your body, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, receive your healing. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you're not born again, I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I can never emphasize and I don't even understand how people live without Christ. Because Christ is our wisdom. Because in him are hidden all traces of wisdom and knowledge. He died for your sins. He shed his blood for you. That you might live. That you might have life. And have it to the fullest. That you would be forgiven of all your sins. And live a glorious life in him. On earth. And in heaven too. So I want to give you an opportunity. To repeat these words after me. Wherever you are. Just pray with me right now and say, Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. Today, I believe that he died for my sins and was raised for my glorification. I choose to receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.